Are you expecting to hear some cheers this Friday night? It's actually the third time I did the IMAF. So I fought three times in Vegas. And then my last fight in New York. And then this is the, yeah, like my fifth fight here. But I don't know. I hope so. I hope there's some Irish in the, in the crowd. I um do you believe that a win over cat will September or the end of summer I've heard, yeah. I heard this fight was meant to be for the title and then I don't know what happened, but I'm here <laughs> fighting cats, so I'm excited. Uh next question. Uh did you or your coaches bring in any special sparring partners to emulate her style? Yeah, I have um I was working with some of the uh Team G B wrestlers. Um prepare for this type of matchup. I know Kat is obviously very strong in wrestling and grappling and quite similar to my style, but she favors more towards wrestling. So it was nice to kind of add that aspect into my game. Um, I think one of my strongest points has always been my takedown defense. And it's just, it's kind of really honed in on that during this camp. I also have a fantastic sparring partner, I call Jake. Um, he's black belt judo, high level wrestler. So it's been a lot of heavy wrestling this camp, yeah. Leah, right here. Being that the uh, Irish fight culture is so strong, what does it mean to you to be able to represent Ireland out here in California this week? Yeah, I'm really proud. You know, we've always had massive shows in Dublin, and I think it's more special. I think, you know, I'm from Belfast, and we've had so many iconic male fighters coming from Belfast. You know, Carl Frampton, McConnell, got the likes of Carl Moore as well, and I'm Bellator. It's nice to just represent you know, Belfast and, and where I grew up and, and both sides of the border. Awesome. Thank you. Leah, you come to California and it's raining. Did you bring this from Ireland? Yeah, and a tornado. Did you hear, like, the day I arrived last week, there was a tornado in California. Like, the <laughs> first one in 30 years. The curse has arrived. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the nickname is from. Yeah. And if it goes wrong, it'll happen to me. <laughs> you got Kat Zingano in front of you. She's beaten, you know, a lot, a lot of top talent, obviously. Amanda Nunes, Misha Tate, Raquel Pennington. What does that mean to you to have that, that name in front of you, this opportunity to get a win over Kat Zingano? Yeah, I think you, Mike had mentioned this name back in November, and I, um, I've been the most excited I've been for a matchup. I've always been a fan of hers and the way she fights, and you know, I, I, I like her as a person. I think just to be able to have this opportunity and get to this point. I'm, I'm proud of myself and I'm, I'm excited to showcase, you know, my skill on, on Friday. I think you know, beating her will take, I believe to be the best version of myself. And I feel like we've really brought that out of me this camp. I've known Daniel James for like 10 years now, so it's so cool that he's the headliner. But I got to think, Leah McCourt versus Kat Zingano could have headlined this thing. Who's asked you got a kick to headline this card? I, I heard it was as well. I don't care. It doesn't really make a difference. If you're first, I'd rather be first on to get it over and done with. But as always, I'm always the main card or co-main event. It's always a lot of pressure and you've thrown it at the deep end. It's like, this is what I've done my whole career since my first professional debut is thrown it at the deep end and we are again. You're a black belt in judo. You've got nice triangles, nice finishes. Do you prefer to keep this fight on the feet or if it goes to the floor, are you confident that you're going to be able to deal with the Cats and Gano on the mat? Yeah, you know, we have our, our we have our game plan and our strategy and we have you know, the, the best keys to victory that we feel that we're going to implement in this in this fight. But, you know, I'm comfortable everywhere. If it's standing or, or grappling, you know, grappling's my game and it's like, if it, if it goes to that, then I'll be able to hang there, yeah. How does Leah McCourt win this fight? Uh, I feel like it's going to be could be a second round stoppage. We'll take a couple from the internet. Here's Santiago. Hi, Leah. Thank you for the time. You look amazing as always. And uh, how is fight week going for you? And did you get a good reception from Bellator upon arrival? Always. Bells were the best. Yeah. Uh, it's been good. We came out a bit early just to get used to the time difference and the jet lag. So it's been nice and a bit calmer than Dublin fight week. So we've all had a good time with the pool and it's chilling. Yeah. I saw that you also was with Luke Trainer earlier during the photo shoot, and I saw that you brought Molly McMahon with you. Is Molly going to be in your corner, and how long have you been working with her now? Yeah, I know Luke, obviously, and his dad, he's in Bellator, he's great. It's good to have some of the English out here, and Molly and I have been friends for like seven years, so I've always had her, you know, she's always had my back, she's in my corner, and 
been keeping me laughing this week as well. So good. Patrick. Hi, Leo. This is Pat McCoy from Combat Sports UK. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. You know, Irish MMA recently has really been thriving through all different promotions. How good does it feel to be one of the front runners among that Irish talent? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely proud. You know, I um, love representing Ireland and love coming from that kind of fighting country. And there's so many great Irish fighters and all the across all the promotions and divisions at the minute. It's nice to, to just to be up here and represent as well. Mills. How's it going, Leah? MMA Locker Room, part of Puffs Force Radio. Hi. I just have a question. Uh, it seems like you've been enjoying your time out there on the mic, commentating a lot of these uh, fighters out there that you've been uh, actually studying. Since you've been behind the booth studying them from a commentator's perspective, have you had that uh, luxury to study Kat Sagano behind the mic at the booth? Um, not behind the mic. Uh, I, I'm a bit of a nerd. I kind of like study fighting anyway and especially when we had this kind of matchup we've had a lot of breakdowns done and you know I've seen her fights I know what way she fights and I know her style so I feel like it's quite it's an advantage I have I know what you know, the strongest ways to win and how to you know make this fight go in my favor got it and for the people out there you got any predictions on how this fight's going to play out a lot of people say when you go into the fight with the specific game plan it's usually better to have you know the results that you have that you want with the specific game plan so how do you see this fight playing out um you know we prepared for all scenarios we're prepared for you know a lot of different the fights to go a lot of different ways and i think that uh i'll be you know the last couple of fights have shown i can i can stand and i can i can grapple as well so as long as I stick to my skill and technique and timing well, you know, I think it's going to be a fight of who gives the first inch, who's going to, you know, give up in that scramble first, who's going to uh, settle in a bad position. I think it's going to come a lot to, down to a lot to mindset. And I think both of us have shown we have been to deep waters and can get through that in the fight. And I think that's what's going to make it exciting on Friday. And we're not going to give up. Danny? Leo, what, what implications do you think this fight has? Uh, you know, I know a win is going to, you know, uh, be a title shot. So it's, it's massive implications. There's, you know, massive opportunities to come from it. I think that it's motivated me even more in training. I always, you know, give 110% to, to fight camps and never take these opportunities for, for granted. I give everything I can. So, you know, I've, I've done everything I can and it's just it's time to go and perform. Yeah. When you know there's some, there's a lot on the line, does this motivate you? Does it up the nerves? What effects does it, ha does it have on you? I just feel like every fight I've had, there's been a lot on the line. There's been a lot of, you know, opportunities after. I have to, to keep winning, to keep getting these big fights. And it's like, you know, I'm used to it now. I'm, I've always had these kind of big events and big uh, platforms to, to fight on. It's kind of been quite good to have that experience, I think. You know, whenever I'm here fighting an opponent like Kat, it's better to have You've been through this a lot, a lot of times, and not um, you know, thrown into all the media and the uh, pressure. But I'm, I'm used to dealing with the pressure fight week. And obviously, this is an opponent that will get you um, a title shot, right? But but beyond that, right? This is also Kat Singano, a historic figure in women's MMA. She's you know fought for a UFC title. She's been in some big fights. How nice is it to add somebody that uh, has so much history? How nice is it to be matched up with somebody that? That, that 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 has that name and, and be able to put that in your resume. Yeah, you know, it's it's amazing. I was watching Kat before I even you know, started fighting MMA. So to be able to get to this stage and you know, she's still fighting and it's just I'm definitely proud to be in this position and uh, yeah, it's like it's quite unbelievable sometimes when I think about it. But at the end of the day, just another body, another opponent and, and I have to go in there and get the job done. I take our last question here from Sean. <laughs> Hi, Leah. Sean Sheen here for Severe MMA. We spoke a few years ago and you said the phrase to me, you want to fight until your idols become your rivals. And the next two fights for you could be Kat Zingano and Chris Cyborg. Like, how massive is that for you to have reached that level? Have you got storm disease in my walkout yet, Sean, in Belfast? No, I'm still working on it. Hopefully, when you, uh, the next question I was, uh, was like, do you want the title shot in Dublin? So maybe for the end in September, we can get that You're done. You're going to have to sing Blinded by Your Grace if you don't get them, okay? No, I'll do it. No problem. Give me a mic. I'll do it. <laughs> no, I know. It's like surreal, isn't it? Like you're looking back and fighting the Ulster Hall in Belfast and all the IMAF shows and 
yeah, it's a bit surreal when I think about it. Them out here fighting for these names and these big opportunities that can come. I saw Chris Cyborg uh, saying this week that, you know, maybe for the first time ever that she's up for fighting in Dublin. Obviously, the September show is coming back. Is that your aim now to win this, get Cyborg in that show in Dublin? Do you know what? I keep saying Belfast. Like, I, I want to fight in Belfast. I want to fight for the title in Belfast. That's that's where I'm from. And there's so, been so many iconic fight nights there. Um, I just believe that I deserve that. You know, I, I get through this fight. I think you, she said that as well. Like, uh, so hopefully that's what's going to happen. Mike Coogan's promised me that as well if I ever fight for the title in Belfast. So, uh, Last question for me, and I, I know someone asked you about the, the grappling earlier on, but I think, you know, Chris mentioned in the interview she did as well with, uh, with James Lynch during the week that she thought your striking could do well against uh, Kat. But, like, Kat has been wrestling an awful lot recently in her fights, and obviously you came up as a judoka, and you're, we all know how good your jiu-jitsu is and everything like that. How good is it, first of all, to hear Cyborg saying those good things about you? But also, like, that's how good is it to, to have someone against you who possibly will want to wrestle and take the fight to the ground where you've been known as someone who people try to avoid getting to the ground? So how good is it to, to you maybe go in there against someone who'd want to take you down? Yeah, it's going to be different. I don't actually think I've ever fought a grappler. I don't think I've, I don't actually think I've ever been taken down in a fight. One of my, I always think one of my strongest um, attributes is my takedown defense. You know, I've when I started MMA, obviously, but like Joe McCulgan, Carl Murray did a lot of wrestling, you know, I had to survive in those rounds years ago and I think it stood by me for years and years. So it's be interesting to see, you know, how, how that plays out in the cage and what happens. Um, you know, I put, put myself in a lot of bad positions, you know, in this training camp and I'm used to, you know, getting taken down, getting back up. It's just, um, it's going to be a nice test and 